Hello everybody, Bets Golden here with Brutus Monroe Goodies. We're going to be making a card today, a fun circle card, using a bunch of the Brutus Monroe things that you can find that are out right now. Two of them, the star of our show, shall we say, are going to be these owls, and we're going to be using the owl stamp and the coordinating die. At the end of this tutorial video, whatever you want to call it, I actually have a really great giveaway for one lucky winner. So I'm going to show you and tell you what that is then and um, tell you how to get in on it so you can be in the running for it. But first, let's go ahead and make our card. The first thing I'm going to do is I grabbed um, just an old circle cutter that I have. Any circle cutter will do. This is just happens to be in my stash, so I decided to use this and a 6x6 six six card base by Brutus Monroe. And I want to make this into a circle. So I want it to be like a a circle could make sure that opens right so I need the top of it to still be attached I don't want to so it can't you know I, I don't want to cut off my end there this is actually a really old school circle cutter I'm sure that you can get a better one somewhere else but like I said we're just using what's on hand so I want to get it as close I need it to stay connected as much as I can and then I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the excess of this card I was going to run my circle cutter in this through my die cut machine but I, I don't think it would go through and my cuddle bug isn't big enough to handle this so we're doing it this way but you could totally die cut this out with a circle um, cutter okay so I did my circle making sure I left something up here uh, to make sure it stays connected and it's just gonna open like so so I am gonna go ahead and get this placed in my stamp press and I liked this is a background stamp by Brutus Monroe and I really, really like to use the stamp press with it because a lot of times you don't get that perfectly crisp image since the stamp is so big and this just ensures that. And if I don't get it perfect, it's not a big deal. I can just go back and re-ink my stamp and I'm good to go. All right, I am using on this terracotta. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up with some terracotta. And this stamp is um, a six by six, so it's gorgeous on cards. And you can do what I'm doing where you trim it down and, and uh, you go from there. Again, everything to make this card with the exception of the circle cutter, because that's ancient, I don't even know where you can get that anymore, will be provided in the link on the website as well as on this video in the description. Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead and just stamp this if I can lift it <laughs> yeah now it's done so I'm gonna take this off here I'm gonna clean my stamp I like to use the squeaky clean by Brutus Monroe this stamp cleaner it is freaking fantastic and then I since it's such a big stamp I will like um, spray it down and then rub it over here And I get a, this stamp really gets a lot of love. So um, there is some staining on it, which I'm totally okay with. But I'll just rub it down on over here. Look at all that goop coming off. Great stamp cleaner. And it smells good. There's rose hip oil in it. I don't know if you guys are familiar with essential oils, but freaking rose oil from like um, the company I use, which is Pure, is two hundred dollars. So, and it's little. So that's really a good price for 
this I think that I mean for the squeaky clean it's priced really well considering that I, I kind of know what's in it and it is not cheap so now what I'm gonna do to the edges is I'm going to actually emboss it with penny embossing powder this just really adds something special. Now, the surface ink should be dry right now, but just to make sure, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with my heat gun. All right, so I'm gonna take the embossing ink and just really, really roughly run it around the edges. This doesn't have to be perfect. It's supposed to look a little bit unplanned. Getting a perfect accidental is not always the easiest thing. Make sure that you pay attention to those areas that, like right there, where the stamp didn't, it, that's, well, that was the end of the stamp, <laughs> so we didn't get anything there. So, and now we're going to go ahead and just pour our powder on and I have a little catcher tray so it's no big deal that I, I mean I could pour the whole bottle on and so what who cares right all right now from here we're gonna go ahead and heat set it so now the background of our card is ready to go and it's beautiful with that stamp that background stamp and the gorgeous embossing I'm going to set this aside and we're going to work on our owls so the first thing I want to do is I want to get my background on my owls a different color um, all I have is this white card stock. The brown card stock I had, I felt was too brown. The yellow was too yellow. So I wanted something that's subtle and just makes a statement without being overpowering. One way that I can do that is I can use the surface ink and make puddles with it. I'm going to show you how and create a background that way. That's what I'm going to do. So you open up your surface ink. Now this doesn't work with every ink. This does work with this ink. And you're just going to smoosh it down on your craft mat. Then you're going to take a little bit of water and spray it out until you get some nice droplets. Then from there, I'm going to take my paper that I want to stamp and I'm just going to rub it through like so. Now, believe it or not, this ink, if you were to heat set this first, I could have stamped my image first with this ink, heat set it, and then come back and done this and it would still do it and it wouldn't even smear the image. That's how awesome the surface ink is. I did go ahead and heat set it because the next step does involve stamping and embossing and I wanted to make sure it was nice and dry so that embossing powder just stuck to where I wanted it to stick to. And it is nice and dry and beautiful and ready to go. It is the perfect, perfect coverage that I wanted. So I'm going to be using the owl stamp along with a coordinating die. However, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my image first. Since this is a smaller image, I'm not going to use my, my stamp platform. I'm just going to use a piece of foam pad. This is actually one you can buy at the craft store. Um, it's by, uh, I think it's called, uh, is it Darcy, Daris, D-A-R-I-C-E. It comes in a huge sheet. Uh, it cuts out eight of these. If you can't find this, it's perfectly fine and works just great to go over to the kids section and use a piece of craft foam from there. You can get those for a buck, if that. You can even use your coupons. So we're gonna go ahead and just stamp it on this image. The reason why I like to stamp on this image, only with clear images, you don't need this with a rubber etched set stamp, is because it gives a nice crisp, it gives that cushioning that you don't get anywhere else because it is a clean foam. So. I'm just going to line it up on my block, see which one works. 
kind of like a smaller block. I like it to be as close to the size as possible that I'm using. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my embossing ink and clear because I'm going to use that same beautiful penny embossing powder on this too. And I'm just gonna ink it up really well. And stamp down, making sure I get full coverage everywhere on it. I think I did. Go ahead and take that tray and I can actually just kind of scoop up if I don't want to pour and just cover my owls like so. There we go. And heat set this. There it is, all heat set. Isn't that beautiful? I really like this embossing powder because there's no wax. So it just sets so nice and it has a beautiful finish to it. There's no clumps, it's all even. Really love it. So now we're gonna take this image and we are going to die cut it out. And I'm just using a cuddle bug. This does tend to slip around a little bit, so sometimes it's best if you get it up on the machine, kind of ready to go. Okay, so there's our little image cut out, and I'm gonna go ahead and just ink the edges now that it's done. There's our owls ready to go on the card. Now this is the fun part. This is when we get to decide if we want to put the sentiment on the outside of the card or on the inside. And I'm gonna put some pop dots on these little guys and put them in the center of this card. But I'm wondering if I should put the sentiment on the outside of it. I kind of think I should and have it perched right there. So I think I'm gonna. So I'm gonna get out my foam mat again. And we're gonna stamp Owl Always Love You. Ink it up with this one again. There it is. Kind of like that it went off into the into the little <clears throat> pretty leaves. I put some pop dots on this cute little pair of owls because I want there to be some dimension on the card. But yet yeah, still able to go through the mail. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop dot this on here. Not quite done yet. I wanna add something else to this, but it's looking pretty cute. I wanna take some bottle cap sequins and ginger and randomly place them on the car just to give it some extra va va voom. Not only do I love these bottle cap sequins because you get a couple of different colors on it, but look at the way that it's packaged. Hello, that is a Ziploc top. You cannot get any better than that. So they've already figured out how to package this for you and store it, which is awesome. 
I'm going to take my Brutus Monroe craft glue and I have the extension tip on it and I'm just going to randomly place some dots of glue on the card and put my sequin on it. If it is white, it doesn't matter because it's going to dry clear. And there you go. That is an adorable, fast, pretty easy little card that you can make. So I promise that there is a giveaway at the end of this and I'm gonna tell you how you can go ahead and take advantage of that. And finale is going to go to another person and that is the L set and the coordinating die set. In order to be entered into the giveaway, you need to subscribe to my channel, make sure you like this video, share it on one of your social media accounts, and give it a thumbs up. That's all you need to do. Oh, and make sure that you check back when I announce the winner, which will be on September 12th. I will announce the winner on September 12th on YouTube. I'll come on and do a live feed on it and I'll leave it up. So make sure that you check back to see if you won. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck to everyone. Bye!